Welcome to Maintainer's Garage. I'm Bags. Today where I'm going to be reviewing my wife's 2008 NC Miata. It is the Grand Touring model. It is the <laughs> P-H-R-T. Son of a P-R-H-T. What does that mean? It is the Power Retractable Hardtop. Why they call it a Power Retractable Hardtop? This is the hardtop. This and this fold up back under here and becomes a convertible. It is a lovely, lovely little car. Uh, we, my wife bought it back in March of 2016 with about 58,000 miles on it. It's now July of 2020. It's got 86,000 miles on it. So just over four years, we've put, you know, just over 28,000 miles on it. It's been a rock solid car and my wife absolutely loves this thing. And I'm a big fan. Talk about everything I like. There's a couple little quirks in there that I think are kind of silly. And then there's a couple little things as a passenger I'm not a big fan of and one or two driving issues. One thing I did forget to mention before I get into the maintenance aspect, it's a six speed manual transmission. Lovely, lovely little gear shifter. Since we've owned it, here's the uh, maintenance items we've done on it. Uh, I did the rear brakes and front brakes right when we first got it. They were worn down. That was at 58,000 miles. Oil, oil filter, air filter, oil, oil filter, oil, oil filter, oil, oil filter. Uh, the, we had to replace the shocks. One of the shocks was leaking, and if you're going to replace one, you might as well replace them all. I will say the rear shocks on this thing are a mofo to change. If you're like me and the previous cars you've had, you know, it's a shock inside the cool spring. You can collapse those down the spring compressors pull it off the car, disassemble it, reassemble it, compress them back down with spring compressors, install them on the car, remove the spring compressors. On the rear of this Miata, the, on the rear of the NC Miata, there's not enough space inside of the wheel well where the shock goes to put it in with the spring compressors on. So you, I had to, that was kind of janky. That, that's really my only complaint about that. And that was really the only hard thing I, I had to do. The thermostat was bypassing a little bit. It was just, uh, it wasn't fully closing, so the car wasn't warming up completely. I did a video on that. That was fairly easy. Air filter, oil change, battery, spark plugs, oil, oil filter. Uh, so clearly, all I've done, minus the one shock that was blown, and we just decided to put four new ones on there, because why not? And the uh, thermostat, all this other stuff is normal wear and tear items and maintenance items, and I've changed all the fluids. So as far as I'm concerned, this thing has been rock solid. It, it's been jam up. It's a very reliable car, easy to work on other than the shocks. So that covers the maintenance aspect. These are very economical cars. Uh, they, you can find them all over the internet for a reasonable price. Maintenance wise, they're very reliable. They're easy to work on. Parts are availability is very high. It's very inexpensive to buy a lot of parts. You can buy them uh, local auto parts stores all over the internet. The fuel efficiency, uh, the EPA says we're supposed to get 22 on the city, 22 on the, or 22 in the city, 27 on the highway. We get 22.8 in the city and 27 and a half on the highway. When my wife drives, she's a little like me. She drives like a maniac. So her mileage might be a little less than yours is. And when I do drive the car, I definitely like to uh, rev it out. So yeah, I'm not getting great gas mileage <laughs> when I'm driving it either, but even beating on it, we're still exceeding the EPA stuff slightly. Visually, from the outside, this car looks great. I love the fact they put 17-inch wheels on it. I like the large fender flares front and back. I think with a little larger set of wheels, the car would look absolutely perfect. I think it looks great now. My wife loves how it looks and doesn't want to change the wheels, so we're not changing the wheels. <laughs> Visually, this thing just looks really good. These mirrors look a little oversized when you're looking at the car straight on, but to me, it's okay. And once you get inside and you start sitting in here, you'll realize this mirror is very helpful. The size of it is great. I'm very, very happy that they put it, what I consider an oversized mirror on this small car because it makes the visuals much easier when you're driving. The, the look of this car, uh, I, again, I just really like I I think it looks good. They did a really good job from the factory. The only thing, I, like I said, that I would change for me personally, I, I, I don't even know if I'd put 18-inch wheels. I'd probably leave the 17-inch wheels and just widen them out a little bit just to give it a little better look and a little more handling. 
Not that the car needs any more handling from the factory <laughs> because it is fantastic. It handles very well, but you know, when you, I'm, I, I live in a performance direction. Some people live in the comfort, you know, you want to be comfortable all the time. I'm a little, I tend to lean towards the performance direction. So trying to get a little more performance out of it, a little wider uh, wheel would be, would, <laughs> would be the reason I would change them out. But again, the steering feel in this car is fantastic. The brakes are are great. We even run the stock brake pads there very well. You can run those at autocross and they would work well. I don't think they'd work well uh, doing track track days, HPDEs, but I think they'd work very well for autocross. And let me just go ahead and say this now. I have not tracked this car. My wife has not tracked this car. I asked to track this car. My wife said, no, so I'm not tracking this car. <laughs> and before I get too far along, we are running the General G-Max AS05, which is a uh, high performance summer, or excuse me, all see, high performance all season tire. We had the uh, Michelin Pilot AS3 Plus is on here before. We decided to switch to these. They are a really good tire. They're, they really are. Uh, if I can get some more uh, seat time with these tires, I'll do a review on them because I think they're fantastic. But, uh, you know, we're running a stock alignment. So we're running, you know, all season, good all season tires and a stock alignment and the car still handles fantastically. I just absolutely love driving this thing. I feel like a hero when I drive it. Now, there's a couple little uh, things on the inside we'll talk about here in a bit. Let me show you the trunk capacity. And this is one of those things where you have to plan. If you plan accordingly and you have the right luggage, you can stick a lot of stuff in the trunk. All right, now we're at the trunk and we're going to talk about the space. Before I do that, if you, if you own an NC Miata, look down here in the trunk, basically behind the license plate, about midway in the trunk, there's a little button. What does this button say? It says trunk release. And you're thinking like, trunk release? I don't understand. If you press this button to be off or on, off on button, when it's off, you close the trunk, the trunk release button inside the car doesn't work, the trunk release button on the remote doesn't work, only the key works. This is one of those things that, and this button is easy to hit with luggage. So, so if you own an NC Miata and all of a sudden your freaking trunk stops working, your remote stops working, check that little freaking button first. As stated, it's about right here. And if you stick your head down in here, you'll see it's a little on off button. Depressed all the way in is on, undepressed sticking out the furthest is off. Now into luggage. In my opinion, there's plenty of space inside the NC Miata trunk. You can go on a, a couple, can go on a five day trip, no problem. Seven days, you might want to make sure there's laundry facilities just to make life easier on yourself. One thing I love about the NC Miata, and I know it applies to the NA and the NB, I don't know about the ND. The trunk is always the same size. What do I mean when I say that? That top doesn't interfere in here. It doesn't come in here. It doesn't take any space in here. So whatever you stick in here and you close this trunk lid, going forward, if you decide you want to drop the top, you don't have to do anything with, this, with the items in the trunk. They're fine because the top doesn't come in here. I think it's brilliant. So on the luggage, if you use this kind of hard-sided luggage, you're going to have a problem inside this trunk. You need soft-sided because you need to be able to manipulate it to work the things around. As stated, I think this trunk is plenty big. I wish the opening was a little larger, but when you have soft-sided luggage, there's a nice little cutout down here that a duffel bag fits in, and it's almost like we bought that for this car, I'm just saying. <laughs> and then you have other soft-sided luggage. You can get your stuff in here just like this. And I put that in the wrong place that goes there. And then your standard size suitcase fits in here and the trunk closes. That's how, in my opinion, you get the most out of this trunk. Soft-sided luggage, it's plenty wide, it's a little deep, there's a little space here. All that to maximize, you need soft-sided luggage to me. That makes things easy. To repeat myself, just to make it clear, once you close this, that top, all this comes up, folds down in here, doesn't bother any of the space in here. Molly, I really only have two complaints and they're not that big. I wish this was just a little bit wider and I wish that stupid trunk release button was in a different location so I didn't accidentally hit it as much as I do. Other than that, I think the trunk space is good. 
you just need to be reasonable about this. When you go to Costco or Sam's Club and you want to buy that 75 pack of paper towels, you need to understand it's going to ride in the front passenger seat with the top down. It ain't going to fit back here. So as long as you think about that kind of stuff, I think this will be a perfect daily driver for anybody unless you've got freaking two kids because only one kid can sit up front and obviously you need something else. <laughs> All right, let me talk about the interior now. Before we get to the interior, I'm going to talk a little about the egress, getting in and out of the vehicle. The NC Miata is not a very tall car. My uh, 2005 Corvette is a little shorter. I'm 5'11", 6 foot, depending on my heels and how high I wear my hair. Sometimes getting into the NC Miata is a little difficult. I was curious, so I measured. The door is not that much smaller than my Corvette's door, and my Corvette is physically shorter than this. The difference is the opening. The height from here to here in my Corvette is larger, and the space between here and here and here and here is larger in my Corvette. That makes it easier for me to get into. As demonstrated here, it's not hard to get in. I just have to nail it. And if I'm in a parking space and I can't open the door all the way, that makes it a little harder. Not a big deal. I just wanted to point that out. I'm in my driving position. I've adjusted the seat. Everything's good. This is how I drive this car. I have plenty of leg room. I have plenty of hip room. I have a decent amount of shoulder room and I'm a 34, 35, 36 waist depending on the clothes that I wear. This seat's very comfortable, supportive. I like it. Fits well, feels good. I can even slide the seat back a little more and I can recline it. The seat has excellent adjustments. It's got a height adjustment here. You can raise it or lower it depending on your requirement. When I sit in here, I can take my hand in my, when I'm in my driving position and just resting, I can take my hand and stick it in between my head and the roof of the car. When I close this door, when I close this door and I just realized the windows aren't down, so let me roll those down. Now with the windows down, when I close this door, you can see me still, this doesn't bother me. It, there's a little bit of a blind spot right in there, but that's where this oversized mirror comes in. Take your time to adjust your mirror properly, and this thing is fantastic. You don't need to add any little, you know, oblong, concave, convex mirror, anything like that. If you set your mirrors up, it works very well. This doesn't bother me at all. I don't feel cramped. I feel comfortable. I can drive over here all day long. One thing I will say, and it took me much longer to figure this out than I'd like to admit, the cup holders. There's a cup holder here and I'll show you when I get to the other side about the center console. There's cup holders in the center console. What I believe Mazda intended and you know they didn't tell me this I just had to figure it out on my own after multiple spilled drinks is when you, when you get into the vehicle when you open the door you set your drink here cup what have you get in close the door when you close the door grab your drink put it in here. When you get to your destination and you're ready to get out of the car, pull your drink out of this cup holder, put it in the center console cup holder, open the door, grab your drink, close the door. Otherwise, if you leave your drink here, you'll spill it. I've done this too many times for my liking and acknowledgement on the interwebs. Anyhow, that's my, only <laughs> that's my only thing about these cup holders here in the center console. And I'll move the car a little bit and show you uh, a better shot of the center console, talk about the stereo and some other things. Before I do that, let's drop the top. In order to drop the top, vehicle needs to be on. Needs to be in neutral, parking brake on. There's one button release here. Then you press the open button and it operates. If the doors are closed, if the doors, if the, window, if the windows are all the way up, it'll crack the windows and perform this operation. When it beeps at you, you're done. Just like that, Dunion rings. Now we'll turn the car off, and now I have all the space I need and can burn my bald spot. Okay, let me move the car a little bit, move that camera a little bit so we can talk a little more about the interior. And I didn't say it before, getting into the vehicle with the roof uh, down makes it very easy. This is a lovely place to be. The steering wheel is nice. It could be a hair thicker, but 
I love the size of it. I love the feel of it. It's got volume controls and cruise control controls right here on the front. It's very good, the, the shifter. Man, the shifter on this car, the throws are short. The shifter has a wonderful size to it. It's got a good feel in your hand. It makes rolling the gears a lot of fun. Ergonomically, this and this are fantastic. And all the stereo, all the gauges on the dash, everything seems like it's focused on me. And this has the Bose stereo, which is eh. It has a six disc in dash changer that's eh. If it was up to me, I'd have ripped this out and put something else in, but it's not up to me. It's up to my wife. She likes it, so I ain't touching it. I will say this, this is one of the things that kind of irk me. This freaking 2008, why do you not have Bluetooth? Now, the next one pisses me off. This is our garage door opener. This car is a freaking 2008 Grand Touring. It's totally specced out, power retractable hardtop, and it doesn't freaking have a home link. I've got it. My wife has to use this thing. My 1997 Nissan Maxima had a freaking home link. This is kind of unexcusable to me in a car that cost this much money when new. I don't understand why they didn't have it. And that's one of those things that you're just like, man, they missed the boat on. Now, I digress and I'll go back to singing this car's praises. Everything here feels great. Seat's comfortable. As you can see, these cup holders are absolutely worthless. That's why 99.7% of the time, this is closed, your arm's here. The window switches are here. The seat heaters are really good. They heat up fairly quickly and they even come up your back a little bit, about I'd say about halfway, and very good. The interior overall is held up very well. There's a couple little spots on the steering wheel and on, my, the, on the driver's side bolster on the seat, there's a little bit of wear. Otherwise, the dash looks great. It's not wavy, it's not cracked, it's not separating. All this interior pieces still look good. They don't look dated at all. So sitting in here just is pleasant. It's very comfortable and a lot of fun to drive. Now, one of my biggest complaints is over here. And I'll show you that now. Just like on the driver's side, when the top's down, getting in and out of the passenger side is very easy. When the top's up, same problem. You don't have the steering wheel, but it is a kind of a cramped space. Transmission tunnel comes out, comes down here. This is kind of narrow. When you put your feet in here, for me, and again, 5'11", 6 foot, if these are my legs, my left leg, my feet feel like they're always being pushed. The left one is pushed to the right side. And then my leg itself feels like it's being pushed over there by this bump out. So when I get in here and that's as far back as the seat goes, you can recline it more. So it, it always feels like I'm at an angle and I just don't have the space to really fold my legs up because of that bump out. Every time I move my left foot back, it pushes it toward the center and it just makes me feel cramped. I can only ride over here a few hours. I need a bathroom break and a gas break every few hours riding over here. It's my only complaint about over here. And see, just like the driver's seat, comfortable, feels good. The top, same situation. It is here, but it, do it doesn't feel like it's enclosing on my head. It doesn't make me feel like I'm trapped. It doesn't make me concerned. It doesn't make me claustrophobic. The only issue over here is this. I think I understand. I think they did it to give driver more comfort, and that makes sense. But this is my complaint. I mean, if I, as a passenger, which is what I do most in this car, this, you know, on an hour-long trip, it's nothing. But after a couple hours, man, two, three hours, and it's just like I, I get fidgety over here because I can't fold up my legs. I can't do with my legs what I'd like to be able to do. I can't quite exactly stretch out like I want. I just can't exactly get as comfortable as I want. So only complain over here. Everything else, jam up. All right, I think it's time to go for a drive. What do you think? We're gonna start with the top up. That's why I like this car so much because of the hard top. I don't feel like I'm driving in convertible with the top up. I feel like I'm driving a standard car. There's no flappiness. There's no excessive wind noise. Um, you know, the inside of here is not built like a Lexus, so it's not gonna be quite that quiet, but it's no louder than my Corvette. 
and that's to me acceptable I mean you know this is an expensive reliable fun to drive car so that's okay you know it's not it's not supposed to be <laughs> dead quiet in here with no wind noise at all and no road noise I will say the general tires uh, are as quiet as the Michelin's. They don't generate any more road noise than the Michelin's did. We're on one of my favorite little back roads. This isn't even in the mountains. This is, you know, five minutes from my house. It's just a nice, windy, twisty road that, in my opinion, allows this car to really shine. And I find this road a lot of fun in my wife's car. Why? It's more fun to drive a slow car fast than a fast car slow. And a couple people are a little uh, confused and some are angry because I just called the, the Miata slow. Well, the Miata is slow. Now, it's not a dog, but it's not fast. It's borderline quick. And, you know, 20 more horsepower wouldn't hurt this thing at all. But it is a little slow. However, on this road, it doesn't ever feel slow. 40, 40 to 45 on a 40 mile an hour road, and I'm not, you know, miserable. There, we've got some traffic in front of us, and that's okay. I'm not trying to, uh, you know, set a new land speed record out here. I'm just trying to go for a drive. And this car on this road is very exciting, even at 45 miles an hour. It's not, it, it doesn't take, you know, trying to wring every last mile an hour out of the car to make it fun and exciting. You don't have to be at go to jail speeds to uh, put a smile on your face. And to me, that's where the Miata has always lived and shined. And I like that. And in this, my wife's Miata, that is absolutely how I feel. The ergonomics, the positioning, this whole thing feels like it's made for me. It feels like whoever sits over here, everything is focused on you. I talked about the steering wheel. This thing is a proper sports car steering wheel. It could be a hair thicker, but it's just fine. It is small, it's direct, and the feeling and immediacy you get with the steering in this car is great. The, the steering wheel is so direct. And I know it's direct in every car. You turn the wheel, the car turns. That's not what I'm talking about. The Miata, man, you can take a hard left hand followed by a hard right hander. This, the, the wheel is short. The ratio is good. And... It, this car will just change directions very quickly and it just communicates very very well when you're driving the seat is very comfortable I'm 5'11 6 foot uh, 34 36 inch waist depending on the clothes uh, pants I'm wearing and the seats comfortable it fits the whole car communicates when I drive this car to my job uh, when I drive it home there's an uh, honor that I take it very high speeds and this car just does not scare me it communicates very well I at no point do I feel like I'm out of control and the car's not communicating to me this car just doesn't scare me that the back end is gonna whip around and spin out on me without me knowing about it and that starts with the steering wheel continues with the seat and into my hips this car does loads of communication to you if you're willing to pay attention to it and it that's why I said it makes me feel like a hero sometimes I can just flat out wail on this car and it's like okay next and I'm like man and sometimes when I look down at the speedometer, I'm like, I'm only going that fast? Wow, it feels so much faster. Now, sometimes it's go to jail speeds, but more often than not, you're not. And that's what makes this car fun, and that's what makes driving a slow car fast versus a, sl a fast car slow fun. To do the same, to get the same kind of feeling in my Corvette, 
I'm always at go to jail speeds. And yeah, that's fun, that's exciting, and but it's not safe and going to jail is not cool either. So I would much rather be on this road doing 45 miles an hour when the speed limit's 40 and feeling like I'm got all the excitement I want. And not only that, the driving, it just feels right. It feels good. It feels proper. This feels like a car that you want to drive. That's something I, I'm happy to live with every day. That means my normal mundane commute is not miserable. I'm not, you know, sore. I'm not uncomfortable. I'm not cramped. I'm not unhappy. And that those are all good things. The steering wheel feels great. The, the shifter is perfect. The throws are wonderful. The clutch pedal is light but reassuring. It's got a, it's got a really good return spring as it comes back up so it, it really has a great engagement point and a good feel to it. Nothing about this car feels chintzy or cheap. Now it is inexpensive but nothing feels cheap. And for me, that's nice because this car, when new, was not cheap. I think I need to drop the top and put a little sun on my bald spot. All right, now we've got the top down, sun on our bald spot. We are living the dream now. This wind deflector right here behind me does a great job. I thought it was kind of gimmicky until I played with it a couple times down and up versus down versus up while I drive. It works. <laughs> now we've completely transformed our experience. Our experience is no longer that of a, you know, standard hard top car. We got the roof down, sun on us, wind in our thinning hair, and just out having a good time. This car with the top down like most convertibles, just is a little more enjoyable. And driving again at the speed limit, may, with the top down, it feels a little faster. So that same 40, 45 miles an hour on this 45, 40 mile an hour road feels faster, feels more enjoyable, feels more dangerous and that to some degree makes it a little more exciting. But it's not any more dangerous. It's the reality of the situation that you're still you're speeding but barely so you're well within the government's safety parameters <laughs> and you know anytime you can basically not speed and have a fun drive that's always a winning combination to me and this right here the smile is what this car does to me more often than not. Occasionally when I'm over there on a long trip, I don't smile, but when I'm over here for the most part, I'm smiling. And what's nice about the hard top is you decide to drop the top and go and the weather starts raining. You can pull over, raise it real quick. Sun comes out, just starts beating on you. Pull over, raise the top real quick and fire up the air conditioner and you're back in total comfort and relaxation yeah this the steering on this car is so fantastic the directness of everything the communication of everything just feels good they this is a driver's car there's no other way to say it and in my opinion there's no better way to say it this car is meant for driving. This car, yeah, driver's car, 100%. I got the, my drink over here in the door. I got that uh, little panel closed. Perfect place for my arm. And we're just out here on a random day having a good old time and barely breaking the speed limit. Breaking the speed limit but just by the hair of our chinny chin chin and feels much faster than that. We're at 45 now, top down, smiling. 
And that's what the Miata will do for you. That's what it does for me and to me. Now, I'm, I'm a car person. So cars speak to me differently. They're not just a, a tool for me to use to get back and forth to work. Now, I'm a tool, but that's another discussion altogether. This car is not just a tool. This car allows me to go out and forget about all the drama of my job, forget about a lot of things, and just allows me to have some enjoyment. All right, we've just come to a red light. A Cayenne, Porsche Cayenne S SUV is in front of us. Think they want some of this? Lord, I hope not because we don't have anything for them. But I will be, I'm willing to gamble and go on a limb and say we're having a much more enjoyable drive than they are on this lovely windy road on this lovely summer day. Oh man, and that's enjoyment. It's what vehicles to me are for. Now, they're also to get me back and forth to work. They're also to get me point A to point B. But part of them, part of that, that space in between, that journey, that's where the NC Miata, this NC Miata, really shines. No crazy tires, no crazy alignment, stock brakes, stock shocks, and the thing just handles fantastic. Communicates great. Makes you feel like a much better driver than you really are. And it also makes you feel much more enjoyment out of a mundane drive than you normally would. And if my uh, fun per dollar value, that's priceless. And on a car that can be had for $10,000 or less with reasonable miles that's, re that's relatively inexpensive to maintain, yeah, that's a, that's a win-win in my book. I, now, there are some things about this car I wish were a little better. In my opinion, the gears are just a little, the ratios themselves are just a little too short. When you're on the interstate at 70, 75 miles an hour, it, it feels like you're revved out. And to some degree, I wish they were a little bigger so I, I wouldn't be at freaking 3,500 RPM or 3,000 RPM. But if that that is the trade-off that I have to have to have some decent acceleration, that's okay. Another thing, speaking of acceleration, these cars are slow, and one of the worst places you can be on this in this car is on a interstate on ramp. In Metro Atlanta, the speed limit is 70 miles an hour. Everyone on the interstate is driving faster than that. When you come down that on ramp, if you have somebody in front of you that's slow poking it at 50 or 55 miles an hour, when it comes time to accelerate up and merge. This car will fall flat a little bit. That's one of my most frustrating parts about this car. It's rare that I'm in that position because most people do a decent job getting up to speed and getting on the uh, interstate. But when some people are just slow poking it, God, it, it, this car, that's where that 20 horsepower would really, really shine. And now we're really having a ball. We're up to almost 47 miles an hour <laughs> and no drama no squealing tires it doesn't feel it feels like you're flying when you're really not and feel like my hair is on fire and everything's safe and that's what this car does very very well yeah 45 miles an hour on this road and i really feel like i'm doing it like i just passed a cop i don't know if the uh camera caught that or not that on a 40 mile an hour road you do 45 the cops just don't care driving like a reasonable human being in within the confines of the speed limit closely eh, I think most police would be okay with that all right I think I've talked enough about this car I think it's time to get back into the garage and 
give you my final thoughts. So to sum all that up, inexpensive to buy, $10,000 or less, reliable, inexpensive to operate, comfortable, fun driver's car. To me, that sums up a pretty good machine as far as I'm concerned. I uh, just want to say thanks to all the new subscribers. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, I'd appreciate that. Subscribe. Thanks for watching Maintainer's Garage. Have a great day.